when you sat on one project. Looking at two other projects and another project and you're like, uh, and I get to come here about for one minute every month or something. Now I need to get that ready for uh, my daughter's prom next spring. It's so like about a year's time, I think. So we should be getting that sorted out, all right? That's a nice flooring my customer gave me. It's very nice for a minute. And uh, I need to get this Vespa Scramblers finished, don't I? I, mean, I probably won't scramble much on it, and I've only sat on it for two minutes, and the seat's actually really not very comfy at all. But never mind. It's all right. It's got new shocks. Um, bit of a blinged up motor and a uh, new shock on the back and somewhere over here if I don't kill myself on the way some knobbly tyres didn't it? and look at that for a pipe isn't it lovely I'm absolutely drenched because um, I've been working on a Porsche today and uh, the cus I've, I've just I'll just take take it to a customer and I got absolutely drenched. So because there's horrendous horrendous rain, of course. Because why wouldn't there be horrendous rain? It's July. It's July the ninth, isn't it? There are all the little shiny bits off a of BRA. Look at that. Needs to go back on it. Best flag in the world, that. Best flag in the world. Yeah. So, uh, and that's um, that's Ethel. So Ethel is uh, an X Reg, whatever year that is, fifty special, with a ninety Vespa ninety headset and the one two five Primavera engine. As I say, it's not, it's not run for many, many years and basically it just needs a strip down now and rebuilding again. Not that I like things to be perfect, but I, I replaced these running bars myself when I was like 18 or something in aluminium because I didn't have a welder. But um, so they need to be replaced with steel. It'd be nice to keep mostly the most of the original leg shields though because they're actually not that bad it was just the floors that had rotted out a bit and the mileage is not accurate and also the uh, throttle things seized up here the gears are the gears are free but the bloody throttle i can't I can't get it sorted out so uh, it might need a new headset because i've tried soaking it in all sorts of things and I could try heat, but I don't think they like heat. So, I was getting excited, think it was a 90, 90 SS, which would be worth about 20 grand now. No, it's not. That's a GRP tank. And it's got things in it, but I've lost the key about 20 years ago. So I rebuilt that. Oh, it was a 50 Special Coca-Cola Special. So, that's the only, the only remaining part is a... Is a like a door to get to the engine. Um, I should really just sell it, I suppose. It's probably worth I don't know, grand as it is, possibly just to, to a blind person. Not impossible. And there's a specialized hard rack. I saw one of them in, um, in Oxford the other week, it's absolutely immaculate. Original condition, it looked absolutely brand new. Still had all the reflectors on. There wasn't a spot of rust on it. I had no idea where the guy got it from. Must have literally got it out of a box. From like old stock at a bike shop or something. I don't know. I mean, this is my clunker. My daughter rode, rode it a lot um, last year. But it was too bumpy for her on the bloody... On the gravel tracks. So, can't beat big fat tyres and a big set of clunker bars, can you? And this is a BRA. 
So I've actually just got some material for this to do some trimming and stuff. And then I need to paint the wings and come up with a colour. It's going to be blue, but I just don't like the dark, dark blue. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. Um, it's got some seats for it too. You can see, can you see the seat? Hello seat. It literally just fits there. I mean, I try to explain this a lot to people, but oh, where's my head torch on? Down here. I can't put a torch on there. In fact, no, you're not going to see it. Down here, there's a chassis rail here. See my hand? There's a chassis rail there, and you cannot put the seat any further back. It's not a big problem on the passenger side, but on the driver's side, it's really caused me some problems. I can either drive in like really thin soles, or I'm not sure what to do, because I can't move the steering wheel. I can't move it, the pedal box is as far forward as it can go. And I'm not an engineer, so. However, I'll end up engineering a solution because I like solutions. Problems don't exist, just solutions. Remember that. That's what I was always taught. And that's a rear light for the Vespa. Try a bit. I tried that one. But yeah. It looked a really odd angle. So I got this bracket like that. So it's kind of going to go on somewhere, somehow like that. On the back of a Vespa. There's my original Monte Carlo Rally sign. And there's my original Targa Flory outside. How exciting is that? I love the Targa Flory. Never. It didn't exist. It was banned before. Well, they stopped it before I was born. But for some reason, I've always had a fascination with Vespas and the Targa Flory. I think it must have been Sicilian in the past life. Possibly. Who knows? Who were you in a past life, do you know? So yeah, I, I should really set off and get um I need to pick up my daughter soon. But um, not a bad universe really. It's not the brightest thing in the world, but I only I only really do my own stuff in it anyway, so it's not like I'm detailing here or anything, because there's nothing more depressing than machine polishing all day in a building with no windows. I mean, there's nothing more depressing than machine polishing all day anyway, to be honest. I mean, I used to like the end result, you know? I used to think, wow, look at that, that looks awesome. But then, I'm not sure. Every machine polishing job I've done lately seems to be an absolute, yeah, I'm not sure why, but it, we've all been really hard work. Um, I, I just really like regular balloting, going to people's houses, getting the nice cars out of the garage, giving them a really good clean, inside and out. And, uh, yeah. Hey, red. I think it's come off that car today because my knees are red too. You can't see him, can you? Oh, knee. Well, it looks a bit red. Yeah, this way. My hair's gone off currently. Oh, look at this. Though. So, this is my toolbox that I've had for like. that I've had for like ages and ages. Um, Look at this, retro goodness. It's all these old stickers up. That was off, I think that was off my dad's MG magnet. And that look, that's a spring rally at Hog Hall Lakeland Motor Museum is a motif above that. How cool is that? That wasn't the El Mirage in 1959, that was a sticker out of a custom car. Look at these beauties. I never went to it either. I've been to Santa Pod a few times. I've never been to Western Australia. And I've no idea where I got them stickers from. 
and there, like an Indian motorcycle. We have a house up there, but I'm not going really to shut it. I could shut it, I suppose. Let's just take this off here. Break everything. Oh, Indian motorcycle. Now that sticks from like 1994, I think. I think basically I like things for what everyone else did. And you know, who's that? Answer in the comments who that is. See who, if anyone knows. Oh, another Indian motorcycle. I think. Is she? Mm. So there we go. That's my garage. That's probably. Oh, look at that. It's a lovely dashboard on this, isn't it? Look at that. Beautiful. So I need to get that carpet trim, uh, gearbox tunnel trimmed as well. And I'm going to put stable matter, matting for the mats, I think, because there's nothing worse than a bloody floor in an open sports car. And I think I saw some early 1900s cars, like London to Brighton type, and a few of them had stable matting on the floor. So, you know what, that's a brilliant idea, that. A, probably not a brilliant idea in shorts, admittedly, because you're going to have egg, legs each year in the camel's armpit, aren't you? But, um, it probably won't be bad. It's a nice, strong little car, really. I mean, it looks a bit of a death trap, but it's not bad. And I love the aluminium. I love the aluminium sides and bonnet. That's such a nice touch. It just gives it an air of something. Because, you know, that's not cheap to make that stuff. It's not cheap to make GRP, but it's not cheap to make that. Um, and it's got the de decapitation mode look, which I'm going to have to sort out. So, frontal impact, bang, that flies up there. Uh, if you've got aero screens on, it chops off your head. So, yeah. So I'm possibly overwhelmed with that design feature. Um, obviously, it doesn't matter when it's in here, but when you've got people in it, I can't get that back on. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah, that's back on there. Some 15 inch wires to replace uh, 14 inch wires that are on it at the moment. Got those off Andrew Hardy Classics, who I can highly recommend. And I'm keeping them black, even though I hate black wheels. I actually hate black wheels, but I'm keeping them black because they've got this lovely chipping and stuff on. Um, and oh, it'd take ages to recreate that, wouldn't it? So, yeah, I'm keeping that like that. Have a look under the hood. Have a class of four. There you go. Twin SUs. Nice tidy in there, isn't it? I need to fabricate a cover for that fuse box as well. But yeah, it's all there and it all works. Which is the main thing. So, this is project number one. That's the first one I need to get ready. I'm hoping it might be ready by Christmas. Not that I'll use it at Christmas. I might do, who knows? Go and park it back outside the house. Solid, it can't rot, but it can a bit. But it's got a lovely gloss black chassis. I mean, it's beautifully built and made, is it, this car? And it's absolutely solid, that chassis. Lovely stainless steel exhaust, which sounds ace. I'd love it to come along the side, but I don't think my girlfriend would like a burnt arm every time we go out, neither my daughter. So, yeah. So I'll leave it underneath. Plus, it's low centre of gravity, isn't it? I'd love a side pipe like the Kate with Madonna. You know, it goes barp, barp, right by your lug hole. But it can get tiresome on long journeys. Especially when my arm needs to be stuck out of the door, too, because I'm that bloody wide. Honestly, the Land Rover owners moan. Try driving a bloody cake, and he used to pop that pestle all the time. Then there was that time going down, um, there was that time on the cannonball, coming back from the cannonball in Lincolnshire when the hood blew off. What was it on the way there? It didn't totally blow off, but it nearly blew off. Like the whole thing was flapping in the air when I was doing <coughs> 70 miles an hour on the M6. So, yeah. I don't know what led to that now. So yeah, yeah, I like open top sports cars. I mean, I've had a few 
I feel this isn't my my best moment, but it's not my worst either. You know, I'd love another catering. I'd, I'd plan is get this done, get it really nice, use it, and then I'll have a think. It's not too dissimilar to a catering where it handles. It's very good hand, road holding. I wouldn't say it handles greatly as in the fact like a wild horse. Because, well, it doesn't handle like a horse. Um, but my Ferrari, the 308, handled really, handled, you know. You felt like you were on tiptoes sometimes. I mean, coming down the Life Valley Road. But hitting like, you, I'd actually get air in the Ferrari over his yumps. But you weren't doing illegal speeds, you know. You could get in the air at 50, 60 mile an hour. And you know, there's nothing like a Ferrari engine at 7,500 RPM screaming behind you when you're airborne. It's just epic. But you can't do shit like in this in this car. It, it's, um, it's more of a tour, I suppose. A sporty tourer. I mean, it's really quick. It'd be a good hill climb car, actually. Um, I don't, don't know if I'd want to get a road cage fabricated. I think it needs more important structural things first. If I was getting anything done, it would be definitely more reinforcement under a bulkhead in case somebody did in an SUV hits you, you know, because that just wouldn't be pleasant, would it? I mean, Christ, it wouldn't be pleasant in a cake room, but we are built to crash, if you know what I mean. The, the proper little racing cars were... This is just GRP signs, isn't it? <laughs> Things have moved on, haven't they, since the 80s. You see, equipment are getting hit by a tank nowadays. So, you've always got that in the back of your mind when you're driving a, an historic car, or, or, or any sort of old car, aren't you, really? But you're going to be folded up like a paper bag. If someone hits you, so whereas time moved on, obviously in the pandas, they're actually really strong cars. You know, I've heard of a few people walking away from absolutely horrific accidents in pandas, especially collisions. One had hit a tractor for Christ's sake, and he walked away. And then I think a week later, his wing was pulled out, and a few other things. They're just incredibly strong cars. I mean, look at them. You could probably roll it down a cliff, and the glass would break. And be right. I don't know. Anyway, I think it's time to go shopping now. My customer's happy. Ethel's happy. The green Vespa's happy. Panda's not so happy. Now, the only trouble on the panda is there's a few bolts underneath that are stuck in the body shell. So getting all these nice new, to me, subframes, which aren't rotten, could have been a waste of time. Because at the end of the day, if I can't get them bolts out, it's scrap. Which is just a horrendous waste of an ace car. Um, it's really sad that would be. Unless I can get another panda body shell without subframes, but all the subframe holes are right. I mean, it sounds like very defeatist, but if you're trying to get you know, the big bolts out, you know, you're drilling out bolts like this. You're drilling out bolts that thick. And getting them centred and and you're drilling out like at least half that bolt I mean how many drill bits will I go through the only other idea is a set of still it stillsons and heat the bolt up keep heating it up plenty you can't get them from you can't get to them from the top unless you cut holes in the above the chassis rails which you then of course have to weld up again well, I've never heard of an MOT inspector like taking a carpet out, see if you've got holes. And I, I can't see it being affecting the structure really. Because um, it's a box section, the box section is still welded to the floor. You're just cutting a peephole into the top to get to the, the, the top of the bolt, but I don't know what it achieves. You might be able to wind them out from the top, I suppose. But the whole problem is caused by people using them stupid windy guns and buggering everything up because they've got these special threads on them apparently and you get stretched if you use a windy gun and tighten them up to kingdom come you know it'd be nice if garages were held responsible for things like that but I don't even know which garage did it I mean it's probably before my ownership you know 
Anyway, I'll stop waffling now. So, nice talking to you. Nice to see you, to see you nice.